Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is James Christopher. And I'm Jesse Krushka. And we are going to be next year's president and vice president of the student government uh, because we are uncontested. Despite being uncontested, we jumped at the opportunity, opportunity to be able to speak to all of you today and to address you with some of our visions and projects that we have going into next year. Uh, we're going to try to keep this short because we know how anxious the trustees are to uh, engage in debate today. Uh, before continuing, I would like to thank Dr. Talty, our moderator, and the Elections Committee for allotting us this time to speak. And I'd also like to thank Amanda Robinson and Mackenzie Mahoney for coming today to uh, engage in a highly important debate and discuss their platforms and discuss the issues to you, the voters. Uh, moving on, Jesse and I are both sophomore political science majors who have been in student government for both of our years on campus. As freshmen, we were excited about the opportunity to represent students and make action-oriented uh, changes to this university. And we look forward to continuing that service as president and vice president with our depth of experience. Uh, along with student government, I'm the vice president of the Pre-Law Society and captain of the mock trial team. Uh, this year in student government, I served as chair of the Campus Life and Environment Committee. Uh, which allowed me a of, to deal with a vast array of student issues on campus. Uh, as chair, I engaged in a style of leadership in which I, uh, I motivated members of my committee to take on their own projects, and this in turn enhanced the productivity of my committee as a whole. I plan on bringing that style of leadership to the presidency, which will increase both the efficiency and effectiveness of the SGA. Under my chairmanship, I have been directly involved in improving areas of the student experience under the realms of parking, dining, and campus safety. And I plan on continuing to deal with those hot button topics as president of the student government. Jesse served as academic affairs chair this year, uh, which as you may have guessed, deals with student academics on campus. Uh, as chair, Jesse revolutionized the effect effectiveness of this committee, working directly with the provost uh, uh, in working on advising. And by working with the provost, Jesse ensured that students' academic concerns would be heard at the highest level of the uh, academic food chain. Jesse's making recommendations to the chancellor, his executive cabinet, and all of the colleges. And as president and vice president, Jesse and I will make sure that those concerns are heard directly by those people. Uh, judging by Ben's facial expressions, I don't have much time left. Uh, but before leaving, I would like to inform you of Jesse and I's vision, uh, of our vision for SGA next year. Uh, Jesse and I will work hard to ensure a higher level of transparency of the student government and a higher level of communication with the student body. That is, that is why we made sure we were given the opportunity to speak today. Because we don't believe it is just our goal to, incre to increase the transparency of the SGA, but we believe it is our responsibility to keep students informed of the projects that we have going and keep students informed about how we plan on moving this university forward. Other visions and pro projects Jesse and I have include improving Pawtucket Street so it is more walk friendly and attractive to students, uh, lobbying the state legislature to make sure UMass Lowell stays affordable, and ensuring that hydration stations be placed in residence halls. I'd like to thank all of you today for coming to this event, and I look forward to continue serving students and improving UMass Lowell as the next president of the student government. Thank you. Thank you both, um, and uh, I'm sure they'll both do a great job. I'm looking forward to working with them, and I know uh, everybody here is as well. So uh, with that, uh, I would ask to uh, uh, allow anybody who's running for, uh, stu for student senate to uh, just introduce themselves and let them know what you're running for and not take too much time, but just uh, uh, get, your, get your candidacy on the record here. Anybody running for, for student senate? Want to introduce yourself? Don't be shy. 
Oh, there oh. Go. <laughs> go ahead. I recognize these two faces. Stand up, please. <laughs> <laughs> yep, stand up. Introduce yourself. The students, of course. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Rob. You know, there's a scary theme here. I don't know whether or not I should disclose this to you guys, but everybody that's running is a member of the mock trial team at UMass, <laughs> which I coach, so it's a, a little bit uh, strange for me here. But um, obviously, all qualified, and, uh, and it should be an interesting year. So uh, here we have uh, to make a choice, right? Between, you have to make a choice between two candidates for student trustee, very important position. I was telling the, the folks at the connector table in the back there that um, close to my heart, because Phil knows and some of you may know that uh, when I was a student here many years ago that uh, I was the first student trustee at the University of Lowell. I ran for that position myself um, and held it the year, the first year of the merger in 1975. That's how old I am. Um, and, the, my, and was succeeded uh, as the second student trustee by my now wife, Patricia Sullivan Talty. So <laughs> we have a vested interest in this position. Um, okay, so to get to the uh, uh, matter at hand, uh, we agreed, right, I guess, with the flip that, uh, Amanda, you're going to go first. Yes. And uh, she has up to five minutes. Amanda, you have five minutes. All right, thank you. Um, I'd like to start out by thanking Dr. Talty for being here today and moderating. I'm sure you're going to do great. Um, all the students for coming and taking time out of their schedule to be here at the debate, and my fellow candidate, Mackenzie, for being here and for all the hard work I know she's put in. Um, my name is Amanda Robinson, and I want to be your next student trustee. For the past three years, I've been very involved, not just on campus, but in the Student Government Association, serving from roles spanning from a senator of the College of Fine Arts, Humanities, and Social Science is to um, the chair of the Campus Life and Environment Committee to the president of the Student Government Association. Now, this experience has equipped me with the skills to advocate for students, which is something that I've been doing for the past three years on campus. So. Um, my first year at UMass Lowell, I was a senator of the College of Fine Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. I was very involved in the Governance Committee along with the Events Committee. Um, it was that year that we voted to make the campus Division I, which is an accomplishment that I'm sure everyone in student government is really proud of. Last year, I had the opportunity to be the chair of the Campus Life and Environment Committee. In that committee, we led the initiative to make the campus tobacco free. In that initiative, we teamed up with over 20 clubs and organizations on campus and in addition to that we reached out to over a thousand students talked with many students and it gave us the opportunity to really get student government more involved with campus um, also on that committee we developed the dining steering committee which um, we're still working on today we're trying to get a lot better food in the dining hall and we built um, the groundwork to get more student issues heard on campus so last year, I was elected the president of the Student Government Association. Um, in that role, when I first got in that role, uh, I teamed up with Vice President Sheila Angelo and current student trustee Phil Jeffroy, and we changed the entire advising structure. Now, the reason that we changed this was that so that student government members would have more access to more influential campus members. So we have committees like Jesse just said, he has access to the vice provost, and through that he's been able to accomplish so much more than student government's done in the past. So student government not only has it increased in size this year, but we've been able to accomplish so much more through this advising system that we implemented at the beginning of the year. In addition to that, as president this year, I've changed the Senate structure. Now, the Senate structure, we now bring in an influential person on campus every single meeting. So through those meetings, we've dealt with some serious issues such as climate change, um, student bookstore prices, um, parking and dining on campus and many other issues and so it's through those meetings every day that when we leave we accomplish something every meeting 
And that's something that no student government association has ever done in the past. So this year as president, I'm really proud of the work that I've been able to accomplish with the student government association. And if elected student trustee, I would obviously continue that work and hope to make um, be a great student trustee. Um, if elected, my biggest thing that I want to do is keep UMass Lowell as affordable as we can. So the past two years, the UMass system has frozen our state fees. Um, the past two years, I've actually gone to advocate at the State House for a freeze in those fees. And I went a few weeks ago to advocate, so we're hoping they'll do it again. Um, also, if elected, I would want to increase the student votes on the Board of Trustees. As it stands today, there are five UMasses, and only two of those students are given a vote. And to me, that's a huge injustice, that UMass Lowell students don't have the opportunity to get their voice to be heard. So my sophomore year, actually, last year, I went to the State House to advocate for five votes for five trustees. So hopefully, if elected, with the new president system, we could try to get five votes for five trustees. Some things that I want to do for the UMass Lowell campus is that I'd want to get more open space on campus so students have somewhere to go between classes to make the living and learning environment a lot better. I also want to increase campus safety by raising awareness of sexual assault and getting more of those blue lights on campus. So um, the past three years I've been working hard and I have the experience and um, I'm excited to hear from Mackenzie and to hear what the rest of you guys have to say in this debate. So thank you. Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> Mackenzie, it's your turn. Hi. So this is definitely not the first time Amanda and I have sat behind a table with a notepad in front of us, but that was with the mock trial team that both of us have been on together. And so my name is Mackenzie Mahoney. I am a junior here at UMass Lowell and a political science major and a peace and conflict studies minor. Now, during my three years here, I have made sure to plant myself in as many organizations as possible here. And I would like to call it an entrepreneurial sort of leadership. I've helped build three clubs on campus from almost nothing to great establishments. With the cheerleading team that I was a captain of, we were a sideline squad when I joined my freshman year. And tomorrow, we're heading off to our first national competition in Daytona, Florida. That is the first time that the program's history has ever went and with the Honors Ambassadors Council. It was a program that started my freshman year from the bottom up, and now we've helped the Honors Program transition into an Honors College. We've helped the Honors Program increase in students by almost double from what it has been in the past 10 years to almost 1,000 students in the Honors College. And I plan on doing that and continuing that process um, to a bigger level than just Honors, to the entire student body. And with the pre-law society that Amanda and I are both on, I'm the president of, and when we both joined it our freshman year, it was a small group of a bunch of kids who really weren't sure what they were doing. And after this past season, we ended with our best record yet, which I have to give um, the appropriate acknowledgments to Amanda and James for their help in that. I plan on being a third party student voice for um, the student trustee to the board of trustees. I realize that uh, while my opponent may have experience with student government, a lacking in student government experience doesn't mean I don't have leadership experience at all. I've worked with countless university administration people to facilitate events on campus, to facilitate programs on campus, town hall meetings with honors, and I plan on doing that, again, to make sure that the student voice is heard not only by the Student Government Association, by the officials here at UMass Lowell, but to the officials of the Board of Trustees as well. It's been 10 plus years since the student trustee was someone outside of the Student Government Association. And I don't get why that is. They're two separate organizations, and as the student trustee, we should be a third party voice to what the students here want to see from the UMass Board of Trustees. Now, my platform here are transparency, progress, and advising. Now, these terms may sound a little cliche, these broad political terms, but they have actual backing. By transparency, I want to create a more open communication from the students to the Student Government Association and then onwards to the, student, or to the Board of Trustees for the UMass system. And with advising, I've talked with Vice President-elect Jesse to get on that commission with him to try and help the student advising process so you don't get a different advisor every year or that it doesn't change until you, or you don't notice the change until you log into SIS and see that it's someone different. It should be a continued conversation rather than one that you restart every year. Your advisor should be somebody who knows your professional goals, your academic goals, and how to, how to get that, um, how to communicate these goals not only with you but with your teachers. And it doesn't stop just at the students for advising. 
the teachers are the ones that are, are advising us. And with all of their classes, the committees that they have, the academic roles that they have beyond the classroom are then added on to advising. So we should get better advising staff who have more time to dedicate to the students themselves. And with Progress, we're a growing institution. UMass Lowell has grown tremendously over the past three years, even since I was here as a freshman. So as someone who has seen these clubs grow from small organizations to the peak of their organization's history, I will show you that I will be the candidate to take UMass Lowell to the next step. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. So the first question that I had, is that door locked? Oh, this worse. We're not going to let anybody else in. Um, the first question that I had from your questions uh, is one that actually I think has already been answered. And that's why you're running. So I'm going to skip that question because it would be, I think, redundant. So um, there was a question, though, that uh, is a sort of uh, maybe a short answer, but uh, if you know, uh, it was a question is about committees of the Board of Trustees and uh, uh, what committees, I guess if you don't know the names of the committees, what your particular pr priorities will be uh, as a member of a large board that has a variety of interests and constituencies. They're not all students, as you pointed out. They're from uh, the business community. They're from uh, academia. In, in that context, what would be your priorities in terms of what you would ask to be assigned to, if you will, uh, on committees or otherwise? So we're going to start this one with Mackenzie uh, and then Amanda. Um, I would have to go with the um, Academic Affairs Committee for the Board of Trustees. I know that they have um, a lot to deal with the professors and the tenure of professors and also the student life and just how um, the s certain policies would affect the students at hand. Academic Affairs, okay. Uh, Amanda? Um, I would like to sit probably on the Finance Committee just because um, keeping UMass Lowell affordable is one of the biggest issues I think for UMass Lowell students. In addition to that, I'd also want to sit on the Student Affairs Committee because I think UMass Lowell is such a growing school in the field of student affairs with all the new athletics we have and residence life on campus and all the new clubs and organizations that we've seen this year. I think it's really important to have a UMass Lowell representative on that committee to get ideas and make sure that our voice is heard. Thank you. Now, uh, you both mentioned affordability in your, in your opening. And my question, uh, uh, the question from one of your uh, f fellow students here that I'm going to elaborate on, or ask you to elaborate on, is how. Uh, I'm going to, I want to make UMass a little more affordable. Well, there's a variety of ways to do that, right? And we, we pay tuition set by the Board of Trustees. Fees are set somewhat by the Board of Trustees and somewhat by the campus. Uh, financial aid is another factor. I mean, if you get more financial aid, it's more affordable. Uh, what would be your uh, plan to make it affordable and be as specific as you can beginning with Amanda? Um, so as I mentioned a little bit in our opening, the past two years, uh, the UMass system has frozen our state mandatory fees, and that's because on the day of advocacy for higher education, there's been such a great turnout from students. So I would really want to continue that great turnout and make sure that there are a lot of students there, so that way students' voice, voices are heard and UMass Lowell student fees are frozen for another two years. Um, in addition to that, if I were to sit on a finance committee or any other student life committee, I know um, there are fees associated with that. I would make sure that UMass Lowell stays as affordable and not vote for any fee increases. Thank you. Specifics, uh, Mackenzie. Now, where there has been a tuition freeze, it was only applicable towards in-state students. So I would try and make it so that the fee would freeze not only for state students, but out-of-state students. And tuition isn't the only thing that students here pay for. I would try and make sure that the parking increases wouldn't get as big as they are. And where there has been things done to decrease that, it has grown from 250 to almost $500 this year. Um, along with that, I would ensure that the voice of not only in-state students are heard, but out-of-state as well. Thank you. Um, I should have said this before, and I'll, I won't do it retroactively, but if, if after uh, one of you gives your answer, the other wants to follow up or wants to add something, uh, just let me know, okay? And, and we'll, we have time for that. Um, Could I follow up? Yes. 
Thank you. Um, Mackenzie, I'm happy you mentioned parking because the Student Government Association, actually, when parking fees did go up, we reached out to the parking committee, and actually, when there was a vote for parking fees to go up, the one student representative was a student government representative, and they were the one person that voted against that. So when those fees went up, student government jumped into action, actually, during the summer, and made it so that parking fees couldn't be increased more than 5%. So unfortunately, you know, no one likes those increases, but with two new parking garages, Unfortunately, there has to be one, and I'm really proud of student government's actions to make sure that that increase wasn't going to be continuously increased, so hopefully students could afford it more. Thank you. Yes. If I may, this is sort of what I mean when we say transparency. It's, there has been all of these things done to kind of advocate for the student, but there are still many students on campus who are angry about parking increases or some sort of increases. And, to create a more transparent environment while there are already things in place to kind of create the forum for students to advocate for what they feel are the disadvantages to going here. There should be a more succinct way to notify students about when they can advocate for themselves and how they know that the student government is doing everything in their power to make sure that they get the best experience they want here. May I respond? Um, one more round. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Um, this is good. For mock trialers. Um, so, uh, we actually sent an email out to every student on campus and notices home. And so, when we do make big changes, such as when there's a chancellor's forum and there's the opportunity for students to come in and speak, we make sure that notices are sent out to more than one, to emailed out to every student. We send notices out in UML today. Oftentimes, we mail stuff home. So, student government, we're trying to be as transparent as we can with the students. And that's something that we've done with parking and with opportunities to speak up, and that's something that, as James and Jesse said, they said they're going to continue to do and try to improve. So. You get the last word. <laughs> Mackenzie. Oh, no. I have nothing. No, no more words. <laughs> okay, we move to the next question. I, um, uh, I think I understand this question, so forgive me if I, uh, if I sort of interpret it my own way, but the question has to do with um, policy changes and, and communication of policy changes, I assume that means to the students. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing it's things like uh, changes in the language requirement, for example, uh, and how those sorts of policy changes are communicated to the students. Uh, this student says that that's a big issue. Uh, so do you want to comment uh, on uh, something like uh, on how policy changes, whether they're policy-wide for the university or for the system, how you would, basically I guess it's a question about how you would uh, interact with the student body uh, when something changes, how would you get that message out in some way that's effective, beginning with McKenzie? Okay, so whenever something big happens here at UMass, uh, the students should be the first ones to know. So if there were to be a policy change, such as the language requirement or something else, I would ensure that there was an open conversation with the students and that when they were notified, whether it was something good for students or something bad, that there would then be a time afterwards for an open conversation, whether it was some sort of town hall meeting with the administration that decided this, pro uh, this policy change or with student leaders so that they could then advocate uh, the students' wants and needs so that like, when the time would come to change these policies that the students' needs would be accounted for. Amanda? Um, I agree with Mackenzie in the sense that um, when there is changes on campus, students ha should be the first to know, and that's something that you know we've done with student government. For example, um, I know an issue that a lot of students have been bringing up lately is that there was um, a minimum balance change. So the minimum balance was changed in order to register for classes. So that's an example of something that student government wasn't involved with, but they recognized that issue. They immediately had a meeting with the chancellor, brought up this issue, and um, sent an email out to every student, notifying students in a better way. And um, they also gave students the opportunity to, so that the policy wouldn't be as strictly enforced. So that's an example of a time where student government took action, they met with the appropriate people, and they let the students know and it's just we're doing the best we can. We're trying to be as transparent as we can. And I think having more forums with students, as it is today, we have two chancellor forums. I think it would be great if we could have more forums, um, maybe like more than once a semester, but to bring up student issues. And if there is a big student issue, we could have some sort of forum or meetings. Thank you. Very good. Uh, any follow-up on that? Nope. OK, good. Um, Here's an interesting question. Uh, I think we pr probably heard what you part, half of this question in your opening, but the question is what are your biggest strengths and weaknesses? We probably heard more about the strengths in the opening. So if you could also address if you 
have any, what uh, you would might consider to be your weaknesses and how you would attempt to overcome them or to improve upon them. And I guess we're beginning here with Amanda. All right. Um, well, I think my biggest strengths, I'll start with that and, and with weaknesses. Um, I think my biggest strengths is that um, I'm very result oriented. I don't like starting to work on something and then just giving it up. I really like seeing the job through and making sure it's done, which um, I think my history does show that I, ha I am result oriented. Um, as far as my biggest weaknesses, um, people in student government will probably know this, I don't really like conflict. I have a fear of conflict. And it's been something that I've been working on all year. Um, conflict, there's a, it's great. You know, you can have constructive conflict. But it's something that I've been working on, how to confront people, how to bring up if I'm uncomfortable about something. And it's something that, as a leader, I've been building. But I think there's definitely still some room to improve. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start with strengths, but I think my biggest strength is that I have been a leader on campus in more than one organization. I have been able to advocate the needs of a smaller group and then bring them to the people who matter. Um, and other than that, I think that I am doing a very good job of advocating for the results and the student voice that I believe is appropriate to bring forward. Uh, my biggest weakness, uh, which is kind of shared by both Amanda and I, is that we're not incumbents for this position. We're both going to be new when it comes to being a student trustee. So it's going to be a transitionary period for the both of us that we're going to need to learn the ins and outs of what it is to be a student trustee because it is a separate part from the student government organization. All right, I'm going to exercise moderator's discretion here and ask follow up on your question by saying, how do you do that? Uh, and starting with, with Amanda, how do you prepare for a position that you haven't was what will you do the day after you find out that you're the new student trustee leading up to that first meeting and then during the year in order to become a better student trustee? How do you do that? How do you educate yourself? What things do you have to do? Well, the day after. Um, I think one of two the best things after. that, two days, okay. I think <laughs> one of the best things that um, I could do if elected and Mackenzie, if elected, could do was to reach out to the current student trustee, Phil Jeffroy, and hear his experience and his thoughts on what the position entails. Since he's been there for three years, I think he has the most experience, and that's where I think we both learn the most. Um, I also think with the change in leadership in the UMass system, it's really important to keep up to date on just exactly what's going on. We all know there's presidential search committee going on. That's just pretty exciting. And I think it's really important to keep up to date on that search and see any changes in that. Kenzie? Exactly. No one knows this position better than Phil does. So it would be kind of a first priority to make sure that we knew not only what needs to be done with the Board of Trustees, but what has already been done. Um, and just kind of brush ourselves up on the actual policies of the Board of Trustees to make sure that we go in and we're educated on what we have to do when we're there and not just kind of wait around for people to tell us what to do. And I apologize for not introducing Phil. He's here uh, and has been student trustee now for three years? So I think we, we tried to figure out whether or not anybody has ever been student trustee for three years. And somebody said there was somebody once that was, but I still don't think so. I think <laughs> Phil's the only one. So how about a round of applause for Phil and all he did for the last few years? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't bring that up sooner. Uh, but since both candidates invoked your name, I figured I'd better write so. Um, all right, at this point, uh, the candidates have, as uh, tradition holds uh, uh, again this year, prepared a question for each other. Uh, sometimes in, in debates in the past, these questions can be some, somewhat difficult. But uh, <laughs> I have no input into what they're going to ask. So uh, the each other question, I think we start off with Mackenzie. OK. So what evidence from your experience dealing with other student organizations on campus uh, leads you to believe that you are the best representative for the student body's interest at hand? Well, that's a great question. So um, as I said, my sophomore year, um, I led the initiative to make the campus tobacco free. And when I was leading that initiative, um, not all of student government was completely on board. So I actually had this great opportunity where I got to reach out to so many other clubs and organizations. We had over 20 clubs and organiza organizations on board. And that was fantastic. I got to go to their meetings. I got to hear their thoughts. And it really brought a whole new insight into student government this year. So this year, we've actually had at many of our club meetings, we've had organizations come in, give announcements if they have an event that they want people to go to. We also implemented this program called Meet the Clubs. So in that program, we've gone to clubs and we've offered any student government resources that they need, um, any PR they need for their events. And we've also had the opportunity to uh, learn a lot about different organizations. So that was really great. 
Amanda, do you have a question for Mackenzie? I do. Um, oh, I was on the wrong page. So um, last year, the UMass system, they implemented a student life forum. And this forum has had tremendous progress. It's really brought up a lot of issues that students face today. So what issue do you think has been the most productive that's been brought up so far? I think that campus safety has definitely been something that has improved a lot in the past couple of years. Uh, I attended a leadership dinner, uh, student leadership dinner on campus safety about a week or two ago, and it was really awesome to hear how the culture has changed and that students are really proactive in wanting to see a safer UMass Lowell for every student out there. And I think that it can only be improved upon further just by creating a better line of communication once again between students and the administration that can be able to take care of these issues. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and at this point, I have a question that is somewhat uh, incorporates a question that I got from, from you all out in the, in the audience here. Uh, it has to do with the difficult decisions that come up uh, when you're representing the university, uh, but you're a student. Uh, there are going to be uh, issues, I can tell f even from my ancient experience on the board, and Phil could tell you that it occasionally happens even in the modern era, but where you're going to be put in a position where you've, you've, you have to decide between the greater good for UMass Lowell and perhaps not necessarily in the best interest, or at least on balance, of the student body. Student body may have to pay a higher fee. A student body may have be surrendering some kind of a sort of per perquisite that they currently have. But when you are confronted with an issue of uh, the interest of the students of, of UMass Lowell versus the interests of the university as a whole, how do you deal with that? I'm not going to give you an exact example, but how do you deal with that conflict? Because that conflict will come up. And I think, Amanda, this is your first, if, my, if I'm right. All right. Um. Uh, I do have a good idea of what you're talking okay, about. Good. We've had a lot of those issues with student government. Like my freshman year when we voted to make um, UMass Lowell Division I school, on the one hand, like making our university all Division I, it was this great opportunity, but it was going to cause a fee increase for students. So it was definitely something that we had to think through to see um, what was better for the university. And I think a lot of people can agree that making our university Division I was a lot better. Um, but I think at the same time, that's an example where, you know, I did go to the, with the university. But I think at the same time, it's really important to keep in mind that, you know, Mackenzie and I, we both are student trustees. We both um, are students, and we're here to represent the students. And that should be the number one priority. So if there is an issue between something like a fee, cr fee increase for students or um, something of that nature, it's really important to side with the students as a student trustee. Thank you, Mackenzie. What's nice about being student trustee is that you do get to make changes and make these decisions that don't just affect UMass Lowell, but affect the entire UMass system as a whole. And what being on that board means is that you don't, you're not there just to make sure that UMass Lowell gets the best situation. It's you're advocating for the needs of the students here at UMass Lowell and the administration here at Student Lowell, but it's about compromise. And it's about working together with the other student trustees and the actual trustees on the board to make sure that UMass as a whole grows with each year. And if that means something along the lines that isn't as favorable for UMass Lowell, it's something that needs to be done to ensure that UMass as an entirety is growing, I guess, to make sure that we all get the same representation and that we all get the same advocacy for our wants and our needs as campuses. My next question is, who is your favorite candidate for president of the University of Massachusetts? No, I'm only kidding. I'm not going <laughs> not to get anybody on the record on that. Yeah, okay. You can see um, a in my face. But, uh, Phil can talk about this as a uh, as student trustee. You, uh, one of you, uh, are going to be um, working with, uh, as I indicated earlier, people from all you know parts of the system, people from outside the system. Uh, you are really going to be a representative, not just of the students, but of UMass Lowell at social events, at public speaking opportunities. Uh, how do you deal with and how do you see your role as an ambassador, really? And I know you used the term ambassador in one of the answers earlier. How do you see your role as an ambassador for the university? And how would you uh, uh, conduct yourself, if you will, uh, as, as such, beginning with Mackenzie? So I already had the experience as an ambassador for UMass Lowell, but on the honors level. I traveled with other honors ambassadors out to Worcester to a conference of other honors colleges within the entire state to advocate for 
the wants and needs of each individual university and then create solutions that would affect the entire uh, state as a whole. So being an ambassador, it's kind of creating this image that is positive for the entire university and being well spoken and making sure that you're saying the things that need to be said and that the students are bringing to you and to make sure that you're advocating these ways in an eloquent manner so that it's able to be decoded by the other people so that it's easy for these changes to be made in the long run. Amanda? Thank you. Um, I think it's really important as an ambassador, as you said, Dr. Talti, and a representative that's representing the university um, to definitely construct yourself in a professional manner. Um, I've had the opportunity to speak at a variety of events, including the Celebration of Philanthropy Dinner, where I got to meet with many different alumni, and it was really a great opportunity to showcase um, students at UMass Lowell, and I got to speak representing UMass Lowell students. And I loved the opportunity. I got to reflect UMass Lowell in a positive manner. And it's definitely, I think, just the biggest thing is keeping yourself professional. And that will ensure that the image of UMass Lowell students stay professional. Thank you. That one's already been answered. <laughs> um, And that one's already been answered. Okay, so we are ready to, uh, to go to closings. And uh, leading, I think we agreed that to take up to a couple of minutes. We're running really uh, quick on time, which is not a bad thing. So take whatever time you need, beginning uh, with, I think, Amanda, right? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'd like to start out by thanking everyone for coming, thanking Mackenzie. Um, I know how hard UMass Lowell students work, and throughout this campaign, I've seen how hard students work, and I've had the opportunity to talk to such a diverse coalition of students and really hear a lot about issues. Um, I'm running for student trustee because I believe that students deserve someone that will work just as hard as they work. And if elected, I promise that I will continue to do that. Um, through my experience, I've had the opportunity to team up with so many different clubs and organizations on campus. I've built very strong relationships with not just clubs, but administrators, faculty members, um, many influential student, students on campus. And I've had the opportunity to hear their concerns and learn how to advocate that at a higher level. Um, I think my record clearly reflects that I'm very result-oriented. Result um, I have a lot of results as a student leader, and if elected student trustee, I would continue to do that. So um, I have the skills, and I have the experience, and I would love to have your vote as student trustee. So thank you. Thank you. Amanda. So I'd, Good. I'd like to reiterate, Amanda, and just thanking everybody for taking the time out of their day to be here. And, I'm running for student trustee because the campus is growing. There are new things going up everywhere, and I don't want the student voice to be left behind in the process. We, as a student body, should be able to grow with the entire university in a way that makes sure that our, ver our voice is heard first and that it's not put behind the other necessities of the university. I have the leadership experience, whether it be in student government uh, association or not. I know what it takes to communicate with upper administration to make sure that things get done and that they get done with the students' priorities first. I'm here because I want to be the student voice for UMass Lowell. I want to advocate and make sure that in the next year or so, well, UMass Lowell has the vote this year, that not only the student voice of UMass Lowell, but the entire UMass system is heard and represented in a way that profits us for the future. Thank you. How about a round of applause for both of our candidates? <laughs> they, they survived. Uh, I want to thank I want to thank Ben Levesque too for uh, the chair of the elections committee for helping out with the event, and uh, thank Sarah Ryan from Student Affairs for for putting it together, and uh, thank the connector and all of you for coming. And we're done.